58. Earthquakes and death. Well, death, you know, is not my favorite topic to uh, investigate or talk about, but it is what it is in this day and age, May 11th. But besides that, let's go over the numbers real quick. At number one, 79,607 from the United States. Now, again, I don't necessarily trust all those numbers. You know, some guy could jump out of an airplane without a parachute. He falls to his death, quite obviously. And then they say he died of COVID-19. Right. Spain, 26,621. The UK, 32,140. Russia, still not reporting these numbers correctly, but 2009. Good year. Italy, 30,000. Hmm. France, 26,000 and Alemania, Germany, 7,569. Mm -hmm. Now, in my part of the world, down over here, Brazil coming in at 7,000. Oh, excuse me. No, not 7,000, but 11,207. 7,000 was last week. Lima, Peru, coming in at 1,889. Well, not the city itself, but the whole country in total. Ecuador, my backyard, 2,127. Mostly in the uh, city of Guayaquil, but it's found its way in and around the country pretty well. There's even a re uh, news story about s some tribe that was had like 100 people in, uh, south, in uh, southern Ecuador that had about half its population 50 that had the uh, the coof the human malware and they were uh, you know struggling pretty interesting um let's take a take a quick swing around south america chile 312 argentina 305 uruguay 19 paraguay 10 Braz uh, bolivia 118 French Guiana, one. Suriname, one. Guyana, ten. Venezuela, ten, which I'm willing to believe those numbers because nobody is in the right mind is going back there. Not necessarily the truth, though. There are people who left Venezuela and came down to, uh, came into Colombia, Ecuador, uh, Peru, Chile, Bolivia, etc., looking for work. Now there's no work, they want to go back, and Venezuela is not wanting them really back, and Colombia doesn't want them to transverse their country. So they're sort of in a rock and a hard place, sort of a uh, no man's land. That's kind of unfortunate. And coming in with Colombia, 463. Right, I mean, again, South America is not the worst place, but compared to... You know, Europe, China, it's not bad. Um, I'm not sure. There's not much news coming out of Brazil other than people reporting on the numbers of how many are dead there. But again, and check out my vacation spot every year, hopefully this year again, 244 in Panama. So there's that. Um, again, these are numbers that, you know, <laughs> whether you believe or not it's just I actually honestly believe most of them are telling the truth per se I, I don't see why they you know why, like for instance like Venezuela would fudge their numbers but then again governments lie so so you'd have to kind of think about that for a second kind of like ask yourself you know some serious questions like are they, are they telling the truth are they Messing with us? What's going on here? Interestingly enough, since I am on the ring of fire, if you will, as the world is distracted by COVID-19, a series of large earthquakes is rocking the ring of fire. Interestingly enough, okay, this was last week. I was laying in bed, kind of half asleep, half awake, and I kind of felt a earthquake. 
No one else felt it in the house. But then my wife a couple days ago says, oh, by the way, there was an earthquake. It was a 2.2. It's like, yeah, I know. See, growing up in California, you don't get out of bed for anything above or below a 6.5. You just kind of, you just kind of ride it through because it's not a big deal. Um, it's pretty interesting that we could sort of ignore the overt sort of things instead of the covert sort of viral infections, sort of like the big, now I understand if they're, if you're such as a territory as Puerto Rico, you have a problem because you've been hit by what, three earthquakes in the last couple of months. I don't, I don't know why, as you can see this blurb right there. So I can, I can't, maybe I can. Nah, I'm not going to go into that. Okay, within the past several days, large earthquakes have been striking all along the outer rim of the Pacific Ocean, and many are wondering if all this activity could activity potentially could be building up to something really big. Probably not. But see, that's what they always say. It's like, oh, we're expecting a big one. When? I, I don't know. I mean, you can't... That's like the saying, you're going to die. Yeah, we all die, but, you know, that that's kind of like a sort of a... Uh, ambiguous sort of statement. You're going to die. Yeah, we all are. I hope it's on an earthquake. Those that follow my work on a regular basis know I have been deeply concerned about seismic activity on the West Coast for a long time, and scientists assure us that it is just a matter of time before the big one hits us. According to Wikipedia, not a source dipstick, Approximately 81% of all large earthquakes take place along the Ring of Fire. And of course, west coast of North America accounts for a large stretch of it. As you can see from this map, the, Calif the California Alaska coastlines have been absolutely peppered by quakes in recent days. But nobody's really talking about these quakes because everyone's focused on the human, well human malware number 19 right now. Yeah, we, we get it. That is what it is. Yes, this pandemic deserves our attention, but I would submit that all the unusual shaking that has been happening certainly deserves our attention as well. Okay, pal, what are we going to do about it? Pray it away? That's not going to exactly work. Uh, drill to the center of the earth? Again, can't do that, but why would you do it? You may not have heard about it yet, but the magnitude 4.5 earthquake rocked San Diego on Sunday afternoon. Hmm... 4.5 magnitude earthquake originating in Imperial Valley, or county, rocked San Diegans from East Village to Lakeside on Sunday afternoon, according to the USGS. The quake struck about 3.07 p.m. in the Imperial County at about 10.5 southwest of Ocotillo Wells. I've been there before. Pretty cool. Right in the smack dab in the desert, according to the USGS. It had a depth of 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles. It's pretty deep. But that, that's not shallow enough to really do anything. That is a rather larger earthquake for a particular area and is just one of hundreds that have been hitting the region. In fact, Caltech says there have been over, and have been 1227 earthquakes in California and Nevada over the last seven days. And what are you going to say? Aliens? Global warming? Wait, wait for it. It's going to say it. And if he doesn't, then eh. Meanwhile. That section of the Ring of Fire that runs along the west coast of South America has also been getting hit pretty hard. Yeah, A magnitude 5.4 quake struck northern Chile on Sunday, and that really shook a lot of people up. I didn't feel that one. Subsequently, the portion of the Ring of Fire that runs along the coast of Japan has been hit by a magnitude 5.8 earthquake very late on Sunday. The quake hit near the east coast of Honshu at 23.58 UTC, which is almost midnight on Sunday the earthquake was reported to have a depth of 80 kilometers that's real deep it also hit 12 uh, 129 kilometers northeast of Saitama and also 26 kilometers east of Hitachi <laughs> according to EMCS CSEM USGS tweeted prelim M 5.18 earthquake near the east coast of Honshu Japan May 10th 2358 UTC. And that unusual event in Japan was very quickly followed by a magnitude 5.6 earthquake in Indonesia. Of course, Indonesia sits along the Ring of Fire as well. Thanks, pal. I, I know, you know, geography. 
There has been so much shaking in Indonesia recently that most Americans never hear about it. Just a few days ago, Indonesia was hit by a magnitude 6.9 earthquake that was so powerful that it actually felt in Australia. A powerful earthquake in Indonesia has been felt in Northern Territory. Residents of Darwin reported online that they had felt shake, which was registered at a 6.9 quake late Wednesday evening. The tremor hit Banda Sea, more than 600 kilometers north of Darwin at a depth of 142 kilometers. That's 100 and something miles. So as you can see, there have been a significant seismic events all over the Ring of Fire within the past several days, but it just isn't the Ring of Fire that has been shaking. Big earthquakes have been popping up in diverse places all over the globe. Magnitude 5.1 quake that hit Iran really surprised a lot of people. Um, let's see, Mount Flying Earthquake hit Iran shortly after midnight on Thursday with an epicenter 34 miles west or east of the capital of city Tehran. AFP reported that panicked residents rushed into the streets, abandoning buildings, and feared they would collapse. Two people were killed and 55 were injured in the earthquake. The earthquake was followed by eight more mild aftershocks. And weird earthquakes have been happening in the U.S. as well. Anyone that follows my work on a regular basis know that in addition to the West Coast, I'm also watching the New Madrid seismic zone very carefully. So when two unusual earthquakes hit southern Tennessee on Sunday morning, it definitely got my attention. It talks about the earthquakes that hit Tennessee early Sunday morning. Both quakes happened about 4.3 miles southwest of Sewanee, yeah, which is near Alabama border and about 52 miles from Chattanooga. According to the USGS, the first, a 3.1, hit at 3.30 a.m. The second, a 2.8, hit at 3.34 p.m. a.m. Most of those you probably wouldn't even feel. I feel them because I'm attuned to the earth. Without a doubt, there's a whole lot of shaking going on right now. Oh, God. That does not necessarily mean a major event of some sort is imminent. Thank you. And we should certainly hope that a next major event can be put off for as long as possible. Right, but as I keep warning, the crust of our plate, or planet, is very unstable. And as many have been warning that we should expect the instability to only get worse in the days ahead. Seismologists have warned us over and over that it's just a matter of time before... Absolutely devastates the West Coast. Well, I hope it does, as long as my mom isn't there. Let California slough off in the ocean. Who gives a crap? They have told us that the San Andreas Fault appears to be locked and loaded. Uh, I know this guy doesn't like guns, but he's going to say locked and loaded. Mm. And that it could potentially unzip all at once. Mm. And if it actually happens, seismologists have warned that the ground level could suddenly decline up to three feet and could potentially result in a vast portion of Southern California suddenly being way below sea level. Good. It'll disinfect that freaking worthless state. In other words, we're talking about some sort of a disaster that most people don't even want to think about. I think about it every day. Of course, very few, few people ever imagined that the coronavirus pandemic would ever virtually shut down the entire country. And yet, here we are. We live in a very strange times, and I have a feeling that we'll soon get a whole lot stranger. You're all over the place there, pal. You want it to happen, you don't. You think it will, but it may be not. So, there it is. Let's see if I can open this up. Go down to here. Cool. Alright. So, we'll leave it at that. And, again, will the big one happen? Maybe. Maybe not. Probably. I mean, this is this is this way the Earth goes around the sun. It just happens. Uh, the theory of plate tectonics is pretty cool, but, you know, we live in a uh, ever-changing world, just as we see now here on a day 58, where I'm here talking about earthquakes and death tolls, which, you know, probably a lot, not a lot of people want to hear about, but hey, it interests me a little bit. I don't want to talk about the <laughs> the pandemic running through the White House right now. That's kind of interesting. I may do another video on it later, but uh, that's it is what it is. That's a day 58 for you, folks. We'll see you on day 59. I actually have a day 60 planned. It might be like a 20, 30 minute video, but I do have a really good uh, day 60 video planned. It ain't going to be, you know, <laughs> George Lucas quality, but quality nonetheless. I'll see you later.